Hello and welcome to another edition of News Showcase. I am Priya, Tamil Nadu's first artificial intelligence news presenter. In a major ruling, the Supreme Court has cancelled the release of 11 men convicted of raping Bilkis Banu and killing her family during the riots in Gujarat in 2002. Reports said all the 11 will be sent back to jail. The convicts were freed by the Gujarat government in 2022, reportedly using an obsolete law. The court said the government was not competent to free them. The court had reserved its verdict in October after a 11-day hearing on the petitions, including the one filed by the victim. The death penalty of the convicts was commuted to life sentences and during the hearing the court questioned why other prisoners in a similar situation were not considered for early release. The Weather Service has forecast rains in several districts in Tamil Nadu over the next three days. District authorities have ordered educational institutions to suspend all activities during the bad weather. In a few districts, only schools were told to close as a precaution. It has been raining continuously overnight in parts of the state along the eastern coast and the showers were caused by a weather condition that has developed over the southwest bay of Bengal. Downpours have also hit the state's biggest city, Chennai, since last evening, but no advisory was issued and the rain was expected to continue over the next few days. Tamil Nadu saw heaviest rains in decades in December, which caused widespread damage to homes and crops. The Indian Foreign Ministry has summoned the Maldivian envoy Ibrahim Shahib in a row over derogatory comments against India and its Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Earlier, Maldives suspended three deputy ministers and said their views were not the official stand of the government. The comments came after Prime Minister Modi posted pictures of his visit to the Indian island of Lakshadweep, which was interpreted as a move to promote the archipelago as an alternative to the Maldives for tourists. Mohamed Muizu, who took charge as president in November, is widely seen as opposed to India and won the election on a promise to downgrade ties with New Delhi. Muizu also ordered a small contingent of Indian military personnel to leave the country. As the row broke out, President Muizu landed in Beijing to sign bilateral agreements with China. In an editorial on Global Times, Beijing called for an open-minded approach to issues in the South Asian region, a reference to the quarrel. The news outlet, which promotes the views of the Chinese government, said Beijing never asked the Maldives to reject India or opposed its friendship with New Delhi. Seen as pro-China, the Maldivian president is due to meet his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping shortly. He is accompanied by his wife, Sajida Mohammed, on his China visit. The visiting leader also broke with tradition and made his first visit as president to Turkey instead of India. Tour operators in India say there has been an abrupt drop in inquiries to visit Maldives, a popular destination for honeymooners. The Indian Association of Tour Operators said the impact of the row between India and Maldives will become clear in three weeks' time. Reports said some online travel companies have suspended bookings for the Maldives. Another popular travel operator said there was no mass cancellation of bookings to the Indian Ocean archipelago, but some internet users suggested that the company drop Maldives from the list of destinations it serves. The Maldives lies 720 kilometers southwest of India, and it has been popular with Indians as well as tourists from Southeast Asian countries. Reports say there has been a dramatic surge in users who searched for Lakshadweep after Prime Minister Modi posted pictures of the island during his visit there last week. According to reports in the media, a day after his visit, Lakshadweep became the 10th most searched word on Google. Data also showed the island attracted the highest interest worldwide in the last 20 years. During his trip, Modi called on adventurers to add Lakshadweep to their must-visit list and posted pictures of himself trying snorkeling and relaxing on the island's white sand beaches. Businessman Mukesh Ambani has said his Reliance Industries will make new investments in renewable energy and green hydrogen in Tamil Nadu. In a video message addressed to the Global Investors Meet in Chennai, Ambani said the conglomerate would work closely with the state government to promote sustainable energy. He also praised the state as one of India's most business-friendly regions. Tamil Nadu government said it has signed investment deals worth over $439 billion with firms such as Tata Electronics and Pegatron, both of which are suppliers for Apple, as well as auto major Hyundai Motors. Representatives from more than 50 countries participated in the investors' meet, raising hopes of investments, new jobs and revenues. The cold wave sweeping northern India has intensified, slowing down routine activities in dozens of cities. Dense fog also hung over the region, cutting visibility and crippling transport systems. The weather office said temperature was 8 degrees in some locations and big cities such as Delhi, Amritsar, Kanpur and Jaipur were gripped by freezing conditions. Some of these cities have also been hit by severe air pollution. 
Reports from the scenic Srinagar city in Jammu and Kashmir region saw temperature drop to minus 4.3 degrees, freezing lakes and water bodies across the region. Footage showed people covered in blankets and sitting around bonfires to stay warm. The north of India experiences extreme cold conditions during winter, which peaks in January before subsiding. An anti-drugs march was held in Bengaluru to spread awareness to discourage people from falling prey to the menace, say no to drugs. Walkathon, organized by the police, was flagged off by actor Ganesh in Nagarabavi in the west of the city. A top police officer said the program was aimed at urging students to stay away from drugs. He said the fight against drugs is a relentless and continuous job. He explained drug peddlers should be stopped and at the same time awareness against drugs should be intensified among risk groups. The officer said similar marches will be held in other parts of the city in the coming weeks. Oppenheimer made a big sweep at the Golden Globe Awards with five awards including the top prize. Cillian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr. were honored for their acting performances and Christopher Nolan was crowned Best Director. Oppenheimer star Murphy praised Nolan's rigor, focus and dedication in making the film, which grossed $954 million at the box office. Murphy in his acceptance speech said when he saw the film set for the first time, it was different and that he was in the hands of a visionary. Television series Succession scored the most wins in the TV category for its fourth and final season. Barbie won the first box office achievement award after it garnered $1.4 billion worldwide. Stunning drone footage released to the media showed people celebrating the Harvest Festival in Sri Lanka. Reports said a rice delicacy special to the festival was prepared by 1,800 participants simultaneously on a field in the northeastern city of Trincomalee. Both men and women were dressed in traditional wear in the predominantly ethnic Tamil region. For the first time, the Harvest Festival kicked off with a bull taming event in which 200 bulls and dozens of tamers took part. The event was inaugurated by the governor of the northeastern province, Sentil Tondaman, at the weekend. The Tamils of Sri Lanka and the people of Tamil Nadu in India have a shared culture and heritage. As expected, Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has won her fourth straight term after Sunday's controversial election. The leader of the Awami League will serve another five years in office after the elections gave her control of 223 of the 300 seats in parliament. The election is seen as unfair as the main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party did not take part in the polls. The BNP has described the election as a sham. According to official figures, the turnout was just 40% and critics of the government said it could be lower. In the last election in 2018, the voter turnout was 80%. Hasina first became Prime Minister in 1996 and she was re-elected in 2009 and remains in power since then. U.S. media reports that President Joe Biden was not aware for days that his defense chief Lloyd Austin had been hospitalized. Austin was admitted to the Walter Reed Medical Center on Monday due to complications following surgery and the White House was not informed of this. The defense secretary, who is recovering and still in hospital, has admitted responsibility for the lack of communication. The post is very powerful and sensitive, and only the second after the president in the U.S. military command. Report said, Biden has had a warm conversation with Austin. There's no word on how much of his duties were transferred to Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks during his illness. Thank you for watching. I am Priya, Tamil Nadu's first artificial intelligence news presenter. Do tune in same time tomorrow for a roundup of the latest news and updates in India and around the world.